Jack Skellington. God, the lighting sucks. Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. It is me, Kian, back again for another video. I don't know if I actually explained what my name is like supposed to mean for this channel, Keanu Speeves. It's just funny because like Keanu Speeves kind of sounds like my real name, like because my first name is really Kian, and so Keanu. And then my last name, I'm not gonna reveal it, it's a secret, but it sounds a lot like Speeves. And then of course, Keanu Speeves sounds like Keanu Reeves, and Keanu Reeves is in movies, and I love movies. So there you go. That's my explanation for all of that. I am back again today to do a, another Blu-ray DVD haul video for you guys. So this is gonna be for December of 2018. And I've gotten a pretty decent amount of Blu-rays since my last haul video. Um, it's not gonna be as big as my Black Friday November haul video, but there's a decent amount in there. Anyways, if you are just now clicking on this video and you love movies, you love to watch movie unboxings, you love to watch haul videos, you love to watch reviews, that kind of thing, then definitely subscribe to my channel. You can just click that button down there. You can do that for me. I know you can, so do it. But let's go ahead and jump on in to this haul video. The first one that I have for you guys is actually a little bit of a cheat because I did buy it today. But I technically wanted it for Christmas. I didn't get it for Christmas and then I just couldn't wait anymore. So I went ahead and bought it today and that is Westworld season two. And if you guys have not watched this show at all, you definitely, definitely should. I love this show. It's a very smart show. It's all about um, this theme park where people can basically pay to live out like their fantasies, like in like a cowboy world or like a samurai world or that kind of thing. And it's filled with uh, basically robots. Um, in the whole entire park and then the robots eventually start thinking for themselves and then they end up you know seeking revenge on the hosts the people that come into the park or like the humans that created them it's just a very interesting show that deals with um you, you know like the, what it means to be conscious what it means to be human it's a very 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 trippy show like to me at least like I know that like, when I watched the first season like it had like this mind-blowing twist towards the end up until that point I didn't know how I felt about the show and then when it hit me with that twist and it was like all at once it makes you look at the rest of the season different and I've only watched a little bit of season two I'm definitely going to be watching this at some point now that I have it. I'm gonna watch it all. It is beautiful. It is glorious. Let's take a closer look at it. Yeah, so this is the front cover and it is kind of like holographic. I'm going to uh, show the first uh, season box set here in just a moment to kind of do like a comparison, but it has this, it's very shiny. It is embossed all in through here so you can feel like the words and this like robotic bird and all that. And on the back, it has like this company name that says Delos there, the symbol, it looks really cool. I love when um, like TV shows and movies will do these like kind of like hardback uh, slip covers for them. And then it comes out, it does come with like a little booklet. It's kind of just like a little cheap booklet that just gives you some like episode overviews and you know what uh, the special features are, which I'm definitely going to be watching the special features for it. You get these things were freaky. I did see this episode where they introduced these things, they're really creepy robots. And then of course you get three discs on the inside. I will say that the first season on Blu-ray, uh, I think did like a little bit better job uh, at the packaging, just because they did give you like this extra little booklet and stuff. Here, let me show it off to you. See the first season here, it's got kind of like this matte finish, but it is embossed. But then on the inside, they give you like a bigger uh, booklet and episode guide. And then they give you like this really cool, like welcome package. 
or something to Westworld, like what they would give, I guess, like the hosts or the guests that are coming to the park, they would give them like this pamphlet, which I think is a really cool touch. I like when movies include like little special collectors um, items. But yeah, I thought that they could have done that maybe for season two, but of course they didn't. Still, I'm satisfied. It's all right. It's okay. But yes, that is Westworld season two. On to the next one. Now these next movies that I picked up um, was from a website called Hamilton Books um, where they have a lot of back stock Blu-rays and DVDs that you can order for pretty cheap. I got like all of these I think for like around 40 bucks which is not that bad um, but I will definitely link that site in my description for you guys. The first one that I have here is called The Prowler, which I actually recently watched um, on some streaming site. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was Shudder, where they do like, it's like a streaming site for horror movies, kind of like Netflix. But I did recently watch it and I did want to pick up the Blu-ray of it, but it's actually kind of like almost out of print. So it's pretty, it's relatively expensive on um, Amazon. But I mean, I think I found this for like $10 on Hamilton Books. Like I said, they have really good prices. But this is definitely a gem of a horror movie. If you like slasher films, if you like 80s, like gore films, the gore effects in this movie are crazy. I've, I had heard of this movie like in passing before, but I had never really like took the time to watch it. But you know, I was at home, I was sick, I was bored. So I was like, you know what? I've heard some people talk about this. Why not give it a go? And I actually really enjoyed it. I found like the the killer in it, he wears this like army man costume is, he was really creepy. And like I said, like the gore effects in it are, it was done by uh, Tom Savini, who's also a, a famous uh, gore special effects artist. I think he did like Dawn of the Dead and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Definitely, definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of 80s horror, 80s gore, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to pop this in for next Halloween for sure because I really enjoyed it. It is a diamond in the rough that is The Prowler. Next up we have The Gift. Um, this one, I want to say this was like five dollars or something but I really enjoyed this movie and especially ever since seeing like Ozark on Netflix I've been a really big fan of Jason Bateman so I really like the movies he's in and this is another one that Joel Edgerton directed and it's essentially about this man and his wife who end up bumping into this guy that the husband knows from high school one day at a store and he starts like hanging out with them and the husband starts getting kind of like weirded out that he keeps wanting to hang out with them because he reveals to his wife that you know he used to kind of, like, he used to be kind of like the weirdo in high school. And eventually she starts to kind of figure out that maybe her husband might have done something a little bit worse to this guy and he's just not revealing it. And I don't want to spoil too much about it, but it becomes really twisted by the end. It has a really good ending. I just love this movie. So definitely check out The Gift. And the next one I picked up was a, I, I want to say this was like an Oscar contender, but I did really like it. And that was Nightcrawler with um, Jake Gyllenhaal. I think this one is on Netflix. Oh, and I forgot to mention that um, The Gift is also on Netflix. So if you have that, you can watch it on there. And I think that this one as well is on Netflix. But um, I did want to pick it up because I did really enjoy it. It's essentially about a guy who discovers that he has a passion for going around trying to film crime scenes um, to make money. Like he goes and gives them to um, news crews and that are seeking that kind of material. And essentially he ends up getting so good at it that it's it's a little creepy because he starts to um, mess with the crime scenes to make the footage look better. And it's just a really intriguing, thrilling kind of movie. It's definitely worth checking out. And I love Jake Gyllenhaal. That was my first celebrity husband right there. Well, maybe not my first, but the first one that I realized like celebrity husband, you know what I mean? Next one I picked up, this was the remake of Amityville Horror. Honestly, like this was actually a pretty decent remake. Um, this came out around the time that they did like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. It was done by, well, it was produced by Michael Bay. I don't think it was directed by him. It was directed by Andrew Douglas. 
I don't know who that is. Anyways, yeah, I thought this was one of the more decent like horror remakes that came out around that time. And plus you also get like Ryan Reynolds in it who honestly, like he wasn't like the greatest in this movie because I still just see him as more of like a comedy kind of person. But I mean, you do get to see him shirtless through most of it and honey, He's looking good. So for that, it was worth the price, but you should definitely check out the remake of Amityville Horror. And next up, this is another one that I got from Hamilton Books and that is Dog Soldiers. Um, I think that this is on, I wanna say it's on like Amazon Prime Video, possibly could be on Netflix, but I ended up picking it up. There is a Screen Factory edition of this, but you know, this is just the regular edition, but that's fine. Um, I had watched this movie back in the day, like back when it came out, and I do remember it being intriguing, but I was also really young when I watched it, and I had heard so many good things about it that I decided to watch it again now. It's essentially a werewolf movie. It's about a bunch of, um, army men who are stuck out in the middle of the woods and they start to discover that there is something after them and it is a clan of werewolves. It's just a really well done werewolf movie. Um, it has really good gore effects, really good action, a really good story. Um, it's from the guy that did uh, The Descent, which is also one of my favorite horror movies. So this is a welcome addition to my collection. And the last one that I got from Hamilton Books was um, Phantom of the Opera. And this was actually, I think, I mean, I got this for pretty cheap, but this was originally a Walmart exclusive um, glow in the dark slipcover. And it came with a slipcover. So that's pretty cool for the price that I paid. Um, this is the only Universal Monsters movie that I do not own. I have the rest of them like on Steelbook, but they never released Phantom of the Opera in that um, line. I don't know why, but so I decided to get it just to kind of complete that collection. So yeah, Phantom of the Opera. So this next one that I have was actually a Christmas gift from my brother. So shout out to my brother, Oliver. I love you. This is a Criterion and it is a Carnival of Souls. Now this is a um, black and white film. It was made back in 1962, really low budget film. Essentially though, um, what this movie is about is about this uh, young woman who ends up getting into a car crash at the beginning of the film. And after the aftermath of the car crash, she's trying to kind of like pick up the pieces of her life and she's trying to find a job and she ends up becoming like an organist at this church out in the middle of nowhere. And um, on her drive out to this like job interview or whatever, uh, she starts to feel like someone is following her and it's just this creepy man that she keeps seeing. And even when she goes to meet the guy for the interview and gets the job and she's like staying in this like uh, apartment complex or duplex or whatever, like she keeps seeing this man and she keeps getting this sense that he's wanting her to go somewhere and it ends up being this like really weird uh, carnival, like abandoned carnival out in the middle of nowhere. I, a little fun story about this is I remember my brother was the one that showed me this movie. He had like a kind of questionable copy, DVD copy with questionable video quality, I should say. And um, he showed it to me one day where I just like watched it. He told me to watch it. I watched it and it ended up like just really freaking me out. It was like one of the only like black and white movies that really just did something to me that to where it just creeped me out. This movie is very effective for a black and white movie, I thought, the, for a black and white horror movie at least, and I felt like it's very ahead of its time. Um, I'm not quite sure if The Twilight Zone was out when this was being, when this was released, but it, it does feel like a very long episode of The Twilight Zone, and it, I remember when I first watched it that it really did creep me out like it made me feel like someone was watching me and it has this just creepy soundtrack where it's a lot of organ music and just the 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 makeup effects that the uh, ghouls wear it, it's it's to nowadays standards i feel like if you watch this you might not be like well that wasn't really like anything but if you just realize like the influence this movie had on like a lot of stuff that came after it and just for its time, like what it did, like this is definitely a gem and it's one of my favorite older horror films. So definitely glad to add this one to the collection. These next couple movies were record store pickups and that would be Mary Poppins. I got this because um, 
the new one was coming out and I hadn't seen this older one in a long time and it actually you know it's a pretty decent Disney movie I mean it's not like my favorite or anything but I do like some of the songs and it is just one of those like magical achievements by Disney that they included um, live actors into uh, animated scenes that was like really ahead of its time for the time that it came out and um, yeah so I got Mary Poppins, and then the next one kind of goes along with it, and that is uh, Saving Mr. Banks. I think I got this on eBay. It was pretty cheap, but it was just because I had watched Mary Poppins, and I heard about this story. I didn't originally know that that's what this movie was about. I thought it was just about Walt Disney, essentially about uh, when Walt Disney was trying to make Mary Poppins. Um, the creator of the Mary Poppins book like refused and she was pretty much a stickler and she just didn't like Disney. And it's just the story behind how he ends up convincing her to give him over the rights to Mary Poppins. And I thought it was pretty interesting. I don't know like how many times I'm gonna like rewatch this movie or anything, but it was pretty interesting. And now I have Mary Poppins and that in my collection. All right, so this next one I actually ended up getting for free and I'm really glad that I got it for free. And that is this older movie by Stephen King called Sleepwalkers. Well, it wasn't directed by Stephen King, but it was, uh, you know, written by Stephen King. I don't know if this was actually like one of his books or anything. I think this was just his attempt to get into like screenplays or something. I do remember this movie from my childhood. I remember watching it like on HBO or something, like part of it and just thinking it was really strange. and. I just, I didn't see like the stupidity in it back then, but like watching it nowadays, like, oh my God, this movie, I'm so glad I got it for free because this movie is just, it's it's like almost so bad that it's good. It's just, it's really hilarious, like how like cheesy it is. Like honestly, the movie opens up with um, a mother and son and they're in an incestual relationship. Within the first 10 minutes of the movie, you're watching a mother and son uh, making out and then the rest of the movie is like the son meets this girl in town and she's like you know I think like the new girl or something and she's intrigued by this guy and obviously she wants to go on a date but like his real intentions is that he wants to like suck the life out of her or something because him and his mother are like these vampire creatures that they call sleepwalkers and their only weakness is cats um, they're absolutely terrified of cats. They never explain that like the entire time. This movie is just, it, it's unintentionally, I feel like really funny and cheesy and stupid. And I just do not understand um, how this movie got made. There is a Scream Factory edition of this movie, which I thought about getting, which is a Blu-ray. It's like a special edition of it. But I, honestly, I would not pay $30 for this movie. This is the kind of movie that you would watch you know, after a few drinks or if you're under the influence of some sort of substance and just to get a kick out of it because that's all this movie is worth. But yeah, that's Sleepwalkers. This next movie I actually really did enjoy. Um, I kind of forgot to put it as an honorable mention in my best of 2018 video, but I'll just talk about it now. And that movie is Assassination Nation. Um, I never watched this in theaters. I didn't really hear much about it. I think I remember seeing like a trailer, but apparently like this movie was so controversial, uh, the trailers were, that they ended up pulling them off MTV, pulling them off all like major cable stations or something. And, um, yeah, so it didn't really like do that great in theaters, but I actually thought that this movie was really, really interesting. But like the first portion of the movie is like, not, I wouldn't say like a regular teen movie. Um, it's it's more about a realistic teen movie where it's sort of uh, showing these, you know, group of misfit teen girls and it's them like partying and drinking and, you know, sleeping around with people and, what ends up happening is that there is some sort of mass um, privacy leak to where uh, everyone's emails and everyone's uh, uh, posts and text messages and pictures and all that stuff get leaked out onto the internet, like the whole town, basically. Essentially though, this massive data hack ends up um, making the citizens rebel against these teenage girls and by the end it kind of gets crazy it starts to kind of turn into the purge where they like have to fight back against the town what i really liked about it though is that it's a good kind of social commentary about the way that social media is nowadays the way that we kind of turn ourselves 
against people really quickly, like on the drop of a dime, we turn into like a social media mob against someone, which we are all victims of it. We all are quick to judge now because of the way that technology is. And so I think that the interesting thing about this movie, even though it kind of falls apart a little bit towards the end, is just that it shows, um, you know, that sort of mob mentality that people have nowadays on social media. And just to think like, if all of your information was leaked to people, like how much that would affect you, how much it would affect you if all of your personal messages, all of your photos, your, your uh, search history on your computer, it just shows like how much people would turn against you or make a, a judgments and assumptions about you because they learned this little piece of information. They saw some tweets you did like 10 years ago. Like a lot of this really fits in with the state of the world right now. And I don't know, I just thought this was a really like overlooked movie. It was really, um, kind of underrated. I know that some people really didn't like it and I will admit that towards the end it gets a little, it is really similar to The Purge in a way, although I thought that this was a much, much better movie than The Purge. I didn't really like any of The Purge movies, but I thought that this was really interesting to check out. And also there's one of the teen girls here is actually, um, transgender and the way that they kind of like treat her character throughout the movie um, and just kind of show her struggle I thought was really good representation for that community as well. Um, I just thought this movie was is a really excellent teen movie. I, I don't know like it was is definitely not on my radar but I'm really glad that I did watch it and that's Assassination Nation. Well, you guys, I hope you did enjoy my little haul video. And again, you know, if you do like movies, if you like hauls, if you like reviews, uh, stuff about collections, any of that stuff, please subscribe to my channel or like it or share or comment. I want to hear from you guys. So stay fabulous, everyone. Till next time. Bye.